Yo, what's going on out there? Justice Seven here, back for the next video here, straight out of the OGC. Today, this is a live stream we did. We're actually right out of my Facebook group called Original Chapters Marketing, where we broke down this one piece, right? Don't underestimate this. And I want to tell you exactly what that is right here today and let you go ahead and leverage that in your business. And I even opened up some Q and A so you can literally see exactly what members inside the group are breaking down for me and giving them direct answers there on the spot. So go ahead and make sure if you haven't already, subscribe to this video down below to make sure you're in tune for the future videos we got lined up and let's get you moving here today. talk sometimes about this whole no like and trust within our audience having them you know yeah we want to get them to know us we want to get them to like us we want to get them to trust us so eventually we can go ahead and make the whole sales process that we got here that much more fluent right but at the end of the day i think a, a just a powerful way that people are really overlooking that is honestly even just by realistically not going deeper into themselves as far as bringing that through their content I think that a lot of times, even like I kind of say that in the description, you see people really kind of chasing the next person. And when I say chasing the next person more so, maybe if you're fresh into this, whatever the case may be, you're moving forward and you kind of see the person who's maybe a step ahead of you, maybe even they're five steps ahead of you, the, the guru way at the top, someone in between, whatever the case may be. And you're kind of looking to see, all right, what are they doing? How can I go ahead and, and duplicate this and make this effective? And I think a lot of times what you see is that when people are trying to duplicate, Instead of going ahead and duplicating one part that is crucial, that there's almost a guarantee that this person is doing, um, they're looking at it a bit too literal, right? They're kind of really looking like, okay, they're using this type of style of content, I'll do that. And, you know, they're using this type of colors, color scheme, I'll go ahead and use this too. Now, I'm not saying that that can't be helpful, right? But at the end of the day, what really these people are doing, what you need to add into your game plan is really being able to show yourself that much more. And I think that it sounds like something that's obvious, but at the end of the day, if you can be able to really you know, show your flaws, you know, really tell them about yourself, tell them about your interests, tell them about your strengths, tell them about your weaknesses, tell them about, you know, really why you're just like them, you know, tell them about why they should be listening to you, you know, bring all of this and bring this on a consistent basis is going to bring a lot of authority into your business. So with that being said, just kind of, you know, tell them... Tell them where you are. Tell them how this is me. This is what I'm about. I'm big on what, even when I talk to my students about kind of taking a stance. And I think realistically, this is down the head there. Where now, instead of kind of being someone who's kind of following the crowd, if you can, if you can see someone's talking about how, uh, you know, just as an example, so, you know, maybe someone's talking about how they love paid ads, right? You can easily go ahead and maybe the, a majority of people in the audience that you're talking to loves paid ads. You can go ahead and be the ante and go ahead and say, hey, you know what? I don't like paid ads. I'm staying for that. I'm all about this here. And this is why I like this. And you know, maybe I'm having some trouble with it. Maybe I'm getting results. Maybe I'm not. But I'm going ahead and doing this because I believe in it. And something like that, once again, if you can do that over a consistent period of time, this is where that leverage is really built. Instead of just kind of, you know, if you do it, you, you know, maybe you go out there and you make a post on something just like that. You know, you can go ahead and do that, but it's not going to be as effective if you just do it once or twice. Right? If you're able to go out there consistently after, let's just say, month, two months, three months, and I mean this kind of at a bare minimum, because realistically, the longer you go, I'm always talking about this is a marathon, not a sprint, right? So the longer you can go, the better you're gonna success you're going to have when it comes to actually taking a stance. Because at the end of the day, you take a stance one time, and then you kind of go back into your turtle shell. Now, you're, once again, you're blending back in. And it's okay. You know, at the end of the day, you know, we're here to give value, especially in, with our branding, and that's how we're going to go ahead and speak to people. And we want to address people's problems, provide solutions for them. But at the end of the day, also adding a, a twist of yourself to it. I think that's going to be just super powerful there. So I wanted to make sure that we're talking about this. So now really, you're, once again, you're telling them where you are. You're telling them about how, you know, even where you are currently in life. I think when you, people talk about how important it can be and effective it can be to speak on like newsworthy subjects, right? Talking about something that's happening in the news now. Right? Maybe you're talking about how you know, this whole Britney Spears and now all of a sudden she's, she's out front and center. Now you bring her into your content a little bit. Nick, and it's going to instantly speak to people that much more because it's relative to them. Right? It's, it's what's happening. If you're watching the Super Bowl, right? if it's around the Super Bowl time and you put a post out the day before or the day after, it's going to be instantly liked that much more than another post. So now at the, other, at the end of the day, go ahead and do that with your own life. 
you know, I realistically, I just had a my second child a month and a half month ago, a little more now, and realistically, going ahead and sharing that with people, that really helps. You know, also sharing sometimes when I'm like, oh, like I'm going through this kind of struggle in my business right now, just sharing that, and like just putting that in the form of a post where I can provide value and allowing other people to resonate with you. I think you know, we talk about you know sharing some of your results. We talk about sharing some of your value. We talk about sharing some of your lifestyle, but at the end of the day you can really get people to resonate with people at a deeper level even past the lifestyle you can share value and get people to resonate with it because you're basically sharing them things that you've gone through and now let put it out there so now they can go ahead and see okay but once again now if you just do it once that's not powerful enough right we got to be consistent with this and go ahead and do it time and time again right and that's why i'll go right back to it right it's a marathon not a sprint so the more we can do this it, i can say so many times where i've spoken to people six months ago and then once again, they might not have been ready to buy it at the six months ago mark, but now all of a sudden they've been following the story, following the journey, seeing me be vulnerable through my content. Like that's gonna, you talk about no like and trust, that's it right there, man. Um, okay, <laughs> hey Kevin, appreciate that, man. Yeah, I think he's over there talking about, I just broke the six figure mark, yeah, man. Um, you know, and now I'm just over here really just trying to share. I wasn't even gonna talk about that today, but I like appreciate the love, man. Um, realistically, you know, just trying to make sure that you're doing what you can to stand out, and once again, the best way to stand out is by bringing your side of the story. I think that, once again, I, I feel like I'm almost, I'm not gonna say that I'm a broken record, but I hear stuff like this all the time. But at the end of the day, if you look back and catch yourself, like take a, t do a quick test and like look at your past content over the past month, maybe past past week, Let's, you can even go short term. And if you haven't been posting over the past week, I think it's time to bump those numbers up, <laughs> right? But if you know, over the past week, past two weeks maybe, have you been really standing out and telling your side of the story? And not just your side of the story, but like really getting into you as a person, sharing really how, especially where you're at currently in your life, where you're currently at with your business. Because when you do that, it's extremely powerful. Even on my profile, I just put out a post two days ago about me making my goals because that's something I literally was just sitting down, making my goals for the second half of 2021. And people are resonating that with me. You know, it's like they're showing, I, you know, I had a, a whole line of journals just like this. Uh, lined up because this is literally something I'm looking at right now, right? So just letting people in like that is just one example and one example of many like I said It's comparing it to like newsworthy events and things like that But instead of comparing it to the whole Britney Spears Super Bowl NBA Finals whatever it may be Compare it to your life, right? And then once again, that, that's kind of why I like to combine this whole value lifestyle posting type of situations You know you go ahead. Maybe you show some lifestyle with your post with the picture you put up but you're giving some value and it's all tying into you and it really just is connecting people with you that much more at a deeper level. So I wanted to really knock on that there so you guys can understand and you know we can really take this that much further. Um, and so I wanna speak on that first, but let's go ahead too. I wanna to bring this up because we went ahead and I dropped a little challenge, more hurdles post, um, group post in there, inside of the group. I think I did it on Monday, maybe Tuesday. Hey, today's Friday, I got my days mixed up a little bit. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and I wanna pull that up and answer some of these live. Um, so you guys can see. So let's go ahead. I'm, I'm gonna share my screen here. So now over here, like I said, and I'm always posting these types of posts here all the time. Um, so by all means, go ahead now and shoot, go ahead and look out for these. You know, so you can go ahead and get your answers, your questions answered. Um, let's let's take a look here. All right, here we go. So da, 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 and I answered some too as well. So I can even briefly go over those. Um, I answered Edwin's earlier here. He was kind of talking about. Uh, there's a lot of area, uh, well there are a lot of different things that I'm doing now and process completion is one of them the other thing that comes in consideration is that is feeling good because that feeling good part will take you over those hurdles much faster I love that there man that that part is actually very true right there um, and that's why I think on the latter half of this question we dove I dove into it a little more um, take care of your health and your entire life will change for the better your business will be easier you know once you devote yourself personal development um, I'll kind of sprint, sprint through this a little bit we're 100% responsible for our own lives. All right, so my kind of response there on the first part is really that, really emphasizing that that whole feel good piece, Edwin is spot on there. I think that that's something where realistically, if you think about, and my fault if you guys can't see this as clearly, um, I'll, I'll blow this up, hopefully that helps. Maybe I can zoom in. Oh wow, look at that, I'm, I'm tech savvy for right now. <laughs> All right, so you know, really, let me move me out of the way a little bit. Um, so now with that being said, Chasing that feel-good feeling is going to be extremely powerful, right? Because at the end of the day, that's a reason I think a lot of people end up losing some traction. 
um, losing traction with their business there. Let me just slide this over. Um, losing traction because at the end of the day now, they're going ahead and they're getting overwhelmed by these big goals they have, right? And so that's even speaking back to what I did earlier, right? I'm setting myself goals for 2021. If I just look at the big picture goal, it's gonna be a lot harder for me to nail in and understand what I need to do to really get there. So when kind of Edwin's saying here, you know, chase that feel good feeling, but he's having a tough time with process completion. I see this more so as we need to go ahead and look at some smaller goals on the way to getting there. So he didn't speak about some specific ones, but in general, if you have a revenue goal you're trying to get to, don't break that down as in, all right, I'm trying to get to 100K this month or this year, whatever the case may be, right? Break it down more so as I'm trying to get X amount per month. I'm trying to get, and then even inside of that month, I mean, this is literally how I treated my business. I'm trying to get X amount per month and then I'll even break that down to the week. So now by week I can keep track and make sure that I'm accountable. That That's something that is really, I started doing this back in February in my business and I'll tell you right now, it is a staple. I like, I make sure that I'm staying consistent with my data, like know your numbers. You know, this isn't all about Facebook ads and we're talking about knowing your numbers here. Um, so that was a big part I was really trying to just get across here with what I responded to Edwin. Um, really, he's so right about chasing that feeling, that, that good feeling. Like right now, you know, like he, like Kevin just mentioned, you know, I crossed that six figure mark, what, I think last Thursday. Um, but either way, like, like chase that good feeling. I was on my way chasing that good feeling. And I'll tell you right now, there's more good feelings I'm constantly chasing. All right. So let's kind of jump now into Cody we got here. Um, he mentioned, I personally feel like I'm, go I'm not going in the right places for leads, spending too much time online and seeming too needy. I need a bunch of, I need to build structure in my life to balance my home life and business life so that I don't burn out. Great, man, great there. I didn't even see some people liking my response. I love it. So at the end of the day, basically, I mean, I could always read what I said, but realistically, let's, let's break it down for a sec. So it feels like you're not going to the right places. I can almost tell him right now. I can almost tell you right now without reading my response. It's never the places you're going into, right? At the end of the day, the places, everyone's always looking for these pools of leads where it's like, Man, where are these fire leads? You know, Justice, you just you just crossed six figures. Who, where are you going to find these leads? Like at the end of the day, I can give you the exact website link to these leads, and that's not going to be the magic sauce that changes it for your business, right? It's at a deeper level we have to understand, and that's where you can look at. Once again, I've done sales trainings on this inside of the group for free here, so really, so you can go back and know exactly what I mean each major part. But each piece of your sales process has to be down, and the sales process starts before you even find the lead right? A huge part of it is really your branding, right? And branding not over just the short term, but over the long term. Because once again, I don't know if Cody's new to this, but a lot of people sometimes are a little bit newer in this space. You can say they've been promoting for a month, two months, maybe even three months. Like for me, it wasn't until my third month that I really started to gain traction. And I was able to, you know, that, that kind of fourth month after is when I had my first 15K month. So there was a lot of, you know, I made some hundred dollar sales kind of early on. I did have a thousand dollar day or two, but at the end of the day, it's tough there, man. So, hey, oh, there we go. Gotta know your numbers. Like Kevin said, I love that, man. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know, you don't know where you need to be, improve your, you don't know where you need to improve your sales process. That is key right there. I truly believe that. Because at the end of the day, I'm telling you, man, you really have to understand now where the kinks are in the system. If you don't know where the kinks are in the system, how can you improve it? right? If you don't know where the kinks are in the system, how how can you make sure that you're fixing it, right? That That's why, once again, I'm, that's why I'm so huge on the sales process, because at the end of the day, if you are getting stuck in your conversations, if you're getting stuck after they buy maybe your low ticket your low ticket item, and then they're not moving on through the process, right? Maybe you're, you get them to buy, they go through the program, but they're not buying the big upsell that you're trying to get them to. Well, if that's the case, then now all of a sudden, it's going to be, you know, you're, if you're not tracking where you're struggling there, it's guaranteed that you're gonna keep on slipping and falling into those same tracks there. I'm, oh, I'm glad this is hitting there, Ryan, seriously. It's like, you know, just understanding the system is gonna make it, that's why almost a lot of times even in this group, you'll hear me talk about that kind of 30,000 foot view. I think that when you kind of have that, it allows you to really, like even myself, I'll go back to the basics a lot of the times, just to make sure, you know, that that I kind of remember where I've talked about guiding principles and how your principles goes into your strategy and your strategy goes into your tactics. Like the reason I go back to this on a consistent basis is realistically because it keeps me on track. It, you know, it really helps to keep me on point so I know what parts I need to focus on. When I'm going too far off the beaten path, 
how do I get myself back on it, right? How do I get myself back on there so I can make sure I'm heading down the right path here? So really back to that data that I want to just, I'm glad Kevin reiterated that because it's so powerful there. And um, it kind of goes back to really making sure to go back to Cody here, even more so it's about building that brand, building that authority that comes with time. You know, it's tough. I've had students that have had some great success within a month and a half of working with me, but at the end of the day, I would never guarantee something like that. Um, it's all about just making sure you're staying super consistent. And if you are, it would be consistent and really pump out content um, to really get that message out there and make sure that your strategy is on point. It's going to help out so much more there, right? So I really want to speak to that. Um, let's kind of jump here to Chino. We got next uh, Chino. He's saying, uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I want to know what his question was. He said, when you have a good offer, how do you relate to people interested as interested in it as a foreign lead? Um, so how do you how do you relate to people interested in it as a foreign lead? I'm just going to assume we'll see how I take this. <laughs> um, but I think what he's pretty much trying to say here is if you have a good offer, which if you're not promoting something you believe in, then you should drop it right now and get something else. <laughs> right. Um, so with that being said, now, how do we go ahead and make sure that how do we go ahead and relate to the people that we're trying to speak to? I think that you have to truly understand what it is that they're looking for. Um, so now once you have qualified them, I mean, goal number one, if you're not qualifying your leads, um, you're never going to have luck, right? Because you're not gonna be able to sell them on what they need there. So now at the end of the day, we want to go through and kind of bring them through this process where realistically, we're really focused on number one, what, where are they at, right? Where are they at in the system? Where are they at in this process? So that now we can go ahead and say, all right, is this something what I have even remotely related to what you want, to what you need, X, Y, Z. And if it is great, right? And if it's not, then maybe, well, that's why sometimes it'd be good to have multiple offers. But if you ask me, it gets a little hectic when you start, I've made videos about like how to handle multiple offers in this Facebook group before. Um, but at the end of the day, when you keep things straightforward, it makes it a little easier. Um, so one, you want to know exactly what they're into and see if what you have can even help. Now, it's, it sounds like if you have a good offer, how do you relate it to people interested in as forwarding a lead? Um, I'm trying to, I'm still trying to understand exactly what he, what, um, what Chino means by that. But either way, I'm going to go through what, what matters most here. Having a good offer, you have to make sure that one, it's actually relatable to a person. If it's not relatable to a person, then you know, you're never going to stand a chance, right? If someone is, if you have a product where you're promoting and it has to do with affiliate marketing education and they're not interested in affiliate marketing education, you're going to be like, it's going to be like pulling teeth. Like personally for me, I think it's a tough battle to win. Uh, it's like, you know, trying to convert someone who's in a different religion and trying to pull them in there. It's a very tough way to go. So, you know, that, you know, I would never even bother trying, right? Cause they already believe in that. Why am I gonna switch them over? Yes, there's a chance you can, but at the end of the day, why why deal with that there? So goal number one, scope the situation, see if they can actually, if they're actually interested in what it is you have, like from a, not even like your specific offer, but what your, the niche that your offer's in. And then from there, you can go a little deeper and find out if they're that much more of a better fit. Um, Chino, you might have to let me know after and see if I let you, if I gave you a good answer there, but we can always follow up after to just to make sure. And, um, I see Ryan, you just asked a question here. Do you recommend building an audience for a long time before I ever sell anything, giving without getting it in return until you've built up, built up yourself as an authority? That's a great question. Um, so me personally, I say that for one, the short answer would be, um, no, I would say I don't recommend building an audience before selling anything. Um, uh, it would more so be. Just being careful. Um, let me know if you can call. I have dinner. Oh, you know, I got. I might have to end this one short. I got another call here. Um, actually, give me one sec. I'll do that. Well, first and foremost, let me answer your question here, Ryan. Um, so, I would say no. I would say no. Long story short, I do not recommend um, waiting to start selling things before you go ahead and actually selling something. I think that you can go ahead now. First and foremost, focus on building that audience. Focus on building that authority within it putting out content that's relevant to them. Um, but what I was going to say is that if you look at my profile page and even how I kind of operate, I really, unless I'm doing like a specific launch, I'm not really speaking about my offers inside of my, uh, inside of my content on my profile, right? So a lot of the times what I'm doing is yeah, I'm putting call to actions out there. I want to talk to people. I want to get, I want to get people involved and I want to you know, build up conversations, but I'm not always putting that publicly out there. Right? A lot of the times I'm more so getting into the weeds and getting in there with people. And now when it's more on a one-to-one -one basis instead of a one-to-many basis, now that's really how I'm going ahead 
and delivering, right? That's how I'm going ahead now and trying to give the offer that way. And so once again, I am, so that's why I say to anyone even starting out, or like once again, if you're still in the early stages of building an audience and you know deciding of whether it's a good time to sell or not, realistically what I say is, as soon as you're able to start getting some leads, we want to get you to start selling immediately. And now, obviously, as I say that, we want to read the situation that I kind of talk about short. I've kind of, I made a live in this video. I mean, this um, Facebook group too, you know, like short game lane, long game road or something like that. I forget the exact terminology I did, but understanding people who maybe are more so warmer, hotter leads for the right now compared to the leads who are more so you have to nurture down the line. So to answer that question, Ryan, um, realistically, if there's someone who's, you feel like is potentially interested in what you got, like by all means, go ahead with that. Because now at the end of the day, you're going to get some great practice out of that. I think that I always tell people like your first conversations are going to suck. You know, if, you, if you're getting into someone who wants to maybe sell on the phone, your first sales calls are going to suck. Like it, even someone who's building up their audience and putting out content, your first content might even suck, right? So at the end of the day, that's where that imperfect action is really super important there. So really to kind of nail down and answer that question, you know, Ryan said, you know, do you recommend building an audience for a long time before I ever sell anything? Um, absolutely not. Um, I'll go, I would say go ahead and start getting into that habit immediately. Um, just but once again, in the right way. We don't want to be like, don't be that person who, you know, you get into Messenger and you just start pitching people right away. Um, and also in my content, this this is also part of my strategy. In my content, I don't really go ahead and just pitch there all the time. If you go on my profile now, um, outside of, you know, if I'm doing some kind of a launch, like I said, a master class or something that's more of a one-off type of product, um, you'll, you won't even know what I'm promoting. You might know what I'm promoting. Maybe if you see that I'm like, I, I share a result from it, um, on my story or something like that. But at the end of the day, I'm not putting out offers on my page, honestly, really like that. It's more so if you want to talk, you want to talk about something, let's have a conversation. So now kind of back to what Chino was saying. Now, if they're interested, I can go ahead and qualify a bit more, right? I can go ahead and relate my offer to where they're at in their journey and see if it's something that'll work for them. Right? So, so that being case, um, extremely powerful right there. So um, I, I hope that answers the question a bit there. Um, and so now let's go ahead and dump into Julius here. So he said, great question. One of my biggest challenges is focusing on one task at a time. Man, that's a good one, Julius. That's a good one there. Um, I mean, for me, what I'm always preaching kind of too, realistically, oh, we got hey, oh, anytime, Ryan. Shoot, man, I'm, I'm glad I helped out. Um, realistically, I'm... Julia said, great question. One of my biggest challenges is focusing on one task at a time. So with that issue right there, one thing that I'm always kind of preaching is knowing what your daily, knowing what your daily tasks are really in your business. Like if you at least have that down, that's a good starter. But now at the end of the day, there's always, I mean, especially for me, as business grows, there's more and more. That's why I even have, you know, a team work with me to help me out at times, or not at times, I would say every single day, basically. Um, but at the end of the day now, I like to set, here's a quick little, we'll call it a pro tip. <laughs> I like to set a big three for my day. So big three by me by that, like, you know, I have, like I said, I got journals I keep all the time. Like I wasn't, that post, I wasn't lying. I really do have journals all the time. I, I write one every day just to at least get some of this stuff out. So my big three is making sure that I'm focusing on the three main things. If there's three pieces, if there's three things I can do today that can really help push me towards generating income, I need to make sure I get those three things done. And so if you can go ahead and do that the night before even, maybe the first thing when you wake up, ideally I do it the night before, if I'm being honest, that's the best time to do it. Uh, so then when you wake up, it's like, boom, you're in it. Um, but realistically, I'd be lying if I said I do it every time. <laughs> so even if in the morning you can go ahead and do that, I'm just gonna help that much more there. Gotta focus on, exactly. Like realistically, when you're talking about, if that's one of your biggest challenges, if it's not generating you income, and especially if it's not generating your income and you're not really making sales at a consistent basis yet, where you can, you know, you, know, you got this thing really moving where you're hitting even like, let's say 5K months, 3K months, you know, until you get to that point, you really even more so need to be focusing on those income generating activities, man. And I'm glad that Kevin's agreeing there too. Because at the end of the day, like I, I, tell, I tell my students, I tell people all the time, I, I might've even said it earlier today and I'm just forgetting. <laughs> it's all about getting, to me, the way that you build this momentum, I'm telling you, this momentum is a crazy thing. It is just so powerful. At the end of the day, when you start to build up that momentum in your business, it's by getting yourself a first sale and then being able to leverage those results after. 
I tell I tell a lot of people it's like once you can get that first, just work 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 if you have especially a proven strategy that you got work it until you can go ahead and get that first sale and then that's when the snowball effect happens like that's you know the way that I've gotten 10k weeks and three you know 30k months that has come off of me just leveraging from the start and I'm, I say this because it's not just me doing this look at look at maybe look at your mentor look at some guru in this space Look at anybody who is in the internet marketing space, especially who has a name. They have a 100% leveraged past results and gone ahead and they continue to use them, right? And if they get, let's just say as an example, we'll, we'll say even for me, maybe I just I just crossed a six figure mark, right? I can easily go ahead now and just keep leveraging that for the next for the next month. Like realistically, I can do as long as I want. But at the end of the day, let's just say I leverage it for the next month. Now I'm able to bang out a bunch of sales now all of a sudden I can potentially knock out a 40k month like right just like that all of a sudden that is now bringing people to me and now let's just say I get a 40k month and now boom before you know it next two three four five months I'm at two hundred thousand dollars you know my I, to, as my kind of revenue there so now all of a sudden I start leveraging that right now it's so uh, what I'm really trying to say there is it's a never-ending thing think of anyone you can think of Russell Brunson you know mentors even I have Jacob Karras is of the world like realistically anyone in between they have taken Blake Neubauer. They have done launches when they were earlier on. They got some. They got some momentum. They got people to know their name. Got some buzz. And then a month later, month and a half later, two months later, boom, another launch they did, right? And now we go. We can learn from this. Is realistically, hey, it's like, I don't want to overuse it, man. Oh, man, Kevin, I, I like that, right? So what we have to do at like a more not not basic level, but as someone starting off is really know how to, le like, once again, I, I even say this as encouragement to a lot of people. Realistically, I don't, I'm making this stat up, but about 90% of affiliate marketers have not made $100 online. If you ask me, that's probably fact, because realistically, a lot of people are interested in it, but as far as like following a true strategy and starting to get some sales, that's, reality is a lot of people have made 100 bucks online. So for you to go ahead and at least crank out a $10 sale, $20 sale, get to your first 100, Get to your first thousand dollar day, especially if you're in the high ticket. Um, this is gonna really help you to step aside and really get it going. And I'm, it's funny, I'm kind of looking at this question now. I don't know how I got to where I got to right now, but at the end of the day, I'm glad I got here. Um, but realistically, to go back to what kind of Julius asked here, one of your biggest challenges is focusing on one task at a time. You want to go ahead and focus on, as we talked about, income producing tasks. That is that is the goal. That is the gold. Without, if you're not generating an income off it, and what I was gonna say before is. I say this all the time. You can have the prettiest looking website. You can have the prettiest looking funnel, right? But if no one's getting to it, who cares, right? So many people want to go ahead and spend before they even get to making traffic, before they even get to creating their offer, they will go ahead and just draft up their funnel. They'll get, they'll spend 99 bucks a month on click funnels, work for three months on just drawing up the funnel. And not, they're not ready quite to spend money on ads yet. And obviously I'm not a guy who spends money on ads, but maybe that's their strategy. So it's like realistically, they're building this funnel up and now they're, they're just waiting until the funnel's perfect until they start sending ads. It's never gonna be perfect, right? The only way you're gonna learn from these things is by testing. So get out there and take imperfect action. When it comes to your content and building your audience, take imperfect action. So if I had to get some specifics on what, what to focus on to answer that question at an even deeper level, audience building, audience and branding, period. That has to be something that you're doing consistently. And luckily, if you're like me, you can batch your content. I'm on Facebook. You know, I'd be lying if I said I wrote my posts the same day I put them out there. I write, I try and write my posts on a Monday or some day in the weekend, and then I'm good to go for the week, <laughs> right? So that I say that realistically now that frees up your Monday to Friday so you can focus on other stuff. So now, now kind of think of what are we focusing on one task at a time? Traffic and sales. So whatever your traffic strategy is, you have to be diving into that. That's a top priority. And once again, your branding is going to be, you know, maybe if to keep up that branding, maybe you're putting a Facebook story up once a day, maybe a couple more times a day. Um, and then the sales side, making sure a lot of people get scared of the sales side and they kind of, for me, sales happens in messenger sales happen by putting two step content out, making sure that you're actually staying consistent with that. Um, don't, don't get beat up on the whole point of, Ah, you know, I'm too afraid to go in my inbox today. Uh, I got leads here, but I want to reach out to them. That's how you get behind the eight ball. That procrastination is what slows you down. And really, once again, it you got to chase that good feeling. Maybe just respond to a couple, like whatever the case is, like we talked about up here. Chase that good feeling. 
you know, that's what's going to really get you there. And if you can get some sales and keep chasing, maybe your goal is one sale a day. I kind of have a goal. It's on my board over here. It's make one sale per day. You know, so at the end of the day, this is something that I try and do. So it gives me a goal. And just imagine now, do you think I make one sale a day? I'll be honest, I don't. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I'm shooting for that. It's not like I'm now when I all of a sudden compare it to the month, I told you I have weekly, monthly goals. It's helped me to stay on point with that because I'm not so thinking of the big picture. Um, I have the big picture and it's drawn into my daily strategy, right? They're, they're directly connected there. So keep that in mind. And I did also see one, we, someone else had dropped another um, post here. This one here. Um, I'll probably go ahead and maybe Christian, I'll, I'll respond to this later too. Um, but Christian asked, um, is it possible to make a profit with low ticket affiliate marketing? So I, I, when I, when I, um, I approved this post not too long ago, what looks like 30 minutes ago. Um, so I was going to say on this one is to give a direct answer. Oh, it looks like something's happening here to give a direct answer. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. It's possible. Now, <laughs> the more important question, if you ask me is not only is it possible, um, but how much are you going to make? So that's kind of a big thing where if, you know, you can even tell by what I named this group here, high ticket domination. Um, is it possible? Yes. And is it a great place for sharpening your skills at first and getting some quick wins? Absolutely. Um, myself, even just to give a, a real life story here, I started off promoting low ticket before high ticket. I, I kind of recommend that if I'm being honest. Um, it gave me the confidence. I was able to bang out like six, seven, eight sales. That's kind of why it took me to my fourth month to even start to really gain, you know, hit that 15K month if you ask me, but realistically it might've taken longer. My first kind of month, I made about six, seven low ticket sales, realistically made about 30, $40 profit. Um, if I, I say the word profit, probably not, technically I was negative. I was spending 90 bucks a month on click funnels, um, but I did end up getting a high ticket sale out of that. So if you're going to promote low ticket affiliate marketing, if you ask me, you have to promote a low ticket with a value ladder offer, right? It's got to at least escalate up to um, up to really some kind of high ticket offer. Has to ascend there because at the end of the day, if you're just selling to low ticket solely, um, you can't be doing that organically. And now you're going into paid ads to do that, and or or YouTube. I would say like one of those two options. And you have to now you're doing so much volume. So at the end of the day, 100% you can make profit, um, but more so long term. Um, that's not where you ideally want to be. Now, that's 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 my opinion, especially in, unless you're doing paid ads or you're doing YouTube. Um, technically, and even if you're doing TikTok, TikTok is great for low ticket. Once again, you got to be doing the value ladder because, yeah, it's great. But at the end of the day, if you're just getting seven bucks from people, 15 bucks from people every sale, how long, how sustainable is that? Unless you're doing YouTube and like these things are going to stay in people's faces. But TikTok trends are changing like crazy, like your old videos. Who knows how long they'll stay in people's faces for. Um, so that would be my answer for you right there. Really making sure that if you're going to do low ticket, it has to be value ladder, right? It has to be value ladder. I, if I could, I would even, let's see if I can share this here. Oh, I don't think I can. Um, I was going to share something for you. Let's see. Actually, I think I can probably do it. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, I was going to share something here just, just, to, just to understand the idea of it, even at the very least. Um, oh, let's see if I can blow this up. There we go. There we go. How's it going, guys? <laughs> All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and switch this here. I'm going to share my screen now. All right. So now we're talking about value ladder versus high ticket. So I'm going to make this real quick and simple. If you have, let's just say we're talking about organic marketing here, right? You're having a conversation with someone. You're going to go ahead, send them to... Uh, let's just call it, even if it's, we're being generous, it's a $20 offer here, right? $20 offer we got. If that's the case, how, you know, how many of these is it going to take to your, get your 5k goal? You know, I'm going to, if I really, I'm going to go ahead and just pull out the calculator for my sake here. And we can see what 5,000 divided by 20, 250 sales. This is going to take here, right? 250 sales. We're talking. So if we're talking about 250 sales, you know, to do this, that's why I say you 100% have to do YouTube or paid ads. If you don't do that um, and you're doing this organically, you are going to burn yourself out to the fullest. My fault. You guys probably can't even see this top corner here. You're going to burn this out to the fullest and realistically, 
It is going to be just just terrible. It's going to be terrible. That That's why organic is not made for low ticket realistically, uh, unless it has a value ladder. So now if you have a conversation, you're sending someone to a $20 offer. They, they buy into it. They go into some kind of, a, let's just call it a five day challenge. Um, you know, you see so many of these things out there, right? So you get a five day challenge. And then from there, they have potential to hitting the big money offer. So now at the end of the day, this way, you, you know, let's just say the big money offer, you get a commission of, and look, if we're even going at a deeper level, actually, this commission has to be $20. Not the sale. So realistically, you'll be selling some for 40 bucks and let's just say you get 50% commission. So 20 bucks here. Let's just say this is the commission we're talking about. Now, if you're getting $1,000 for these, now instead of getting 250 sales, a lot of these places are converted about one out of 10. So let's say one out of 10 people you sell this, one out of 10 people you sell this um, $20 item to are gonna upgrade to this. And that is possible if you have the right strategy. Like I said, I made seven, eight high ticket, uh, low ticket sales of the product at a value ladder. And I was able to go ahead and get a $4,500 sale of that. And I got a 1350 commission, you know, so realistically this is very doable. Um, so now that's going to take 50 sales, right? Assuming you get a thousand dollar commission, 50 sales to make that happen, to get to your 5k goal. So I know I'm kind of all over the place here for you guys, but I just want to break that down, especially maybe I'm gonna have to send this over to you too, my man. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm forgetting your name. It was uh, Christian. Sorry if I'm butchering it. At the end of the day, I'll look it up after. Um, but just understand that I'm big on if you're going to do a low ticket, it's got to be this. This right here is the value ladder, right? This section right here is the value ladder. So you really got to make sure that you're focused on this value ladder side. Because um, if you're not, it's going to be very tough. So that's what I want to just kind of briefly touch on that there for you. Um, so we get a good understanding there. Um, and like I said, Long story short, the fact that you're looking at this, thinking about these types of questions, the fact that you're really trying to make sure that you're heading in the right direction here, this is what matters. So like, just kudos to you guys for making sure that you're diving in and making this thing happen here. Um, that's what's gonna happen. That's what's gonna take you the long run. Uh, keep going strong, I'm telling you. It's a matter of time for you. <laughs> it's a matter of time. Um, let me see if there's any other questions we got here. I ended up, man, I said, oh good, I did get it right, Christian. Um, I'll have to tag you in this after, my man, um, so you can see. I'll put a timestamp for you. Um, but like I said, keep going strong. Make sure that you're following some some kind of a daily plan. Uh, so at least, you know, and when I say daily, it doesn't have to be seven days a week. You know, realistically, I work about, I work five days a week. Um, I'd be lying if I said I didn't do some work on the weekends. But at the end of the day, just make sure that you're staying consistent with what matters. Like we talked about, like Kevin and I mentioned earlier, right? Income producing tasks. Don't get so lost in the technical stuff in the weeds there. It's going to really hurt you um, as far as making some progress, right? Success loves speed. Money loves speed. Make sure that you're one of those people who's trying to just move the needle. Take imperfect action, you know? And even if we bring this back to where I started today, um, what I'm kind of more so focused on the main, like I said, the first, if you go back and if you missed the beginning, uh, we're kind of talking about being yourself and how that's going to really affect your content. Um, so once again, taking that action and practicing that. Uh, I think that's just extremely powerful there. So now you're practicing being vulnerable, showing your showing your strengths, showing your flaws, showing why people should be listening to, showing and taking a stance on things and doing that over a consistent period, a, a longer term period, right? Not just for a month, not just for two, three posts. Like we got to really go ahead and, and smash this and make sure we're doing this over a longer period of time. Um, so I will, I'll go ahead and see, but I said, I said I had somewhere to be. You know what? You guys got a little more out of me. You know, I couldn't. I couldn't help it here. I gotta gotta show some love. Uh, let me know if there's any other questions you guys got while I'm here. I'm happy. Hey, if you guys made it this far, drop a hashtag. We made it. Drop a hashtag till the end. And shoot, by all means, like I said, drop a question. Uh, I'm here. I'll stick on for another. I don't know, 30 seconds or something, um, just in case anyone has a question here while we're uh, kind of in jumping over hurdle mode. Um, technically. Well, um, we made it, baby. That's what I'm talking about, Ryan. Seriously, man. I'm glad you made it here to the end because, as you saw, I mean, a lot of gold here. And if you can start taking some action, oh, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It's a matter of time. It's a matter of time. Seriously. Um, no, but hey, if that's all we got for today, hey, totally fine. Like I said, this is, this is a nice little Friday live for me here. I'm usually not doing it on the weekend. Um, but <laughs> it's, it's the final countdown. There we go, man. Oh, I love it. Hey, enjoy everybody's weekend. 
man, keep working hard in your business. Uh, but maybe, maybe if you worked hard Monday to Friday, take the weekend off. I know I'm taking a little bit of time off to celebrate, so I'll probably sign off after this. <laughs> have a have a book you're reading now. Oh, I love that. Great question. Great question, Ryan. Um, I do definitely. I'm um, actually once on the whole topic of sharing stories. Um, I put this on my stories. Maybe you might not have seen it, but I actually just finished this one here. This is Renegade Millionaire, um, and I'm, maybe my finger's blocking it. But this is Mr. Dan Kennedy. So this one's all about marketing here. And actually, because I want to kind of go on this theme here, I'm going actually on uh, this next one. No BS wealth attraction in the new economy. All right. So this one's actually, I've heard a lot of good things about this one here, the second one. Um, you know, let's see, I'm still early on. And to be honest, I've actually, because I want to make sure I'm focused on this, I've actually been doing a little bit of a side training on some email marketing um, by a guy named Ian Stanley. Um, so just uh, that I could say I'm almost putting a quick pause in this because I want to make sure I'm all in when I start reading this. Um, and so, yeah, I've been kind of doing that in the meanwhile. But Dan Kennedy, he's a he's a, an OG, whatever you want to may call it. Uh, a lot of people know him in the marketing space. Uh, really good on talking about some good core concepts. Kind of it, it's high level, um, but even actually what I'm seeing, it's, it's like it's high level. But at the end of the day, it's stuff that can really affect your day to day. Um, to simply put it, but long story short, definitely I'd recommend checking him out. He's great in the marketing side. I've done a lot of um, reading like self-help books in the past, um, and he was one of the first kind of authors who I started reading more on the marketing side to get into it. Um, so like, you know, I was reading stuff like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Think and Grow Rich, those kind of bigger ones. Um, so yeah, it's been great reading uh, Dan Kennedy and others. Um, but yeah, so, super powerful there. Richest Man in Babylon is another good one to check out. Uh, but yeah, I love it, man. My man Ryan's always trying to educate himself. I love it. Yeah, de definitely check him out there. I love it there. Um, let me know if anyone's got anything else. Let me see. I'm just going to check my, my messages. I was supposed to... Let's see. I waited five minutes. <laughs> oh, there we go. Good. Yeah, so it looks like I don't have my next one until five. I'm over in the Eastern time. Maybe you guys are a little earlier in your day. Uh, but it's almost checking out time. Almost time to get some dinner. Ah. Uh. So I'll, I'll wait a sec here, but yeah, if that's it though, um, like I said, keep diving in your business, keep making it happen. Man, how long is this live going? 43 minutes? I didn't see that coming. I was expecting a 15 minute, but you know, um, I want to really make sure I spend some time and go ahead and dive deep in these challenges. I'm probably going to go ahead and tag some of these guys who um, put their hurdles out there so they can know um, where this was. I'd recommend how to stop worrying and start living Ooh, start living by Dale Carnegie. Mr. Dale Carnegie. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I'm not surprised at all to hear that Dale Carnegie's got some another gold there. I don't think I've heard about that one. I'm going to look at that. Thanks for looking at it. Hey, you know, I try and share some gems, Ryan. You try and share some gems, too. There we go. I just, I'm just i at least going to take a look at this picture real quick, see what, see what we got here. Let me see here. Make sure this is the right one. I'm just going to share this here so we can all see. How to stop, gotcha. Awesome. How to stop worrying and start living. I like it, man. Dale Carnegie, he's a, he's a legend. He's a legend. Dale Carnegie, who was also thinking of? Um, who was thinking of? Ernest, not Ernest. I'm forgetting the other guy. They, like, I consider like, and Dale and the other guy, like kind of like the two god, um, you could say godfathers of this this kind of self-help space, I feel like. Um, I can't think of the other guy right now. I'll have to think of it later. Maybe I'll drop it in the comments later. <laughs> um, but great, great suggestion. I love that. And maybe anyone else uh, watching this back later on, go ahead and drop some more book recommendations. Let's go ahead and help each other out. I love it. Napoleon, Napoleon Hill, is that's the, that's the main one I was thinking of. Um, but then it was Napoleon Hill and somebody else of the two, actually. Um, if I even, one sec, one sec here. Now, now I can't help it. But let's see if you can think of it first. Um, Napoleon Hill, but then, da, 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 da. I, wanna, well, I don't know why the word earnest is stuck in my head here. Um, it's on, I got this one. I got this one on Audible, actually. Um, the one I'm thinking of here. Sign in. Clearly, I've kind of steered away from the audiobooks lately. There, I think it's Earl Nightingale, right? I think it's, that's what I'm saying. I keep saying Earl. It's got to be Earl. I'm going to assume you're right. Earl Nightingale, there we go. I got it, my library, Earl Nightingale. Man, hey, you, de you deserve a prize here, Ryan. Good, good work. <laughs> yeah, man, that, that's perfect there. Um, yeah, so, I, like I said, anything by these guys. And then, of course, Dale Carnegie. Um, but yeah, I would definitely think about adding some uh, Dan Kennedy. 
I'll try and think of some other good marketers to kind of share too. Um, but a lot of good one. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, man. Uh, but yeah, hey, shoot. Great hanging with you guys this Friday. Um, you guys already know, so make sure, you know, if any challenges or things you got in the next in, the, in your business, drop them in the group. I'll, I'm always kind of posting those kind of posts about challenges, hurdles, things like that, at least like once a week or every other week. Um, but if you got anything in the meanwhile, feel free to share a post. Myself or you know, even others will uh, chime in as well. So let's do what we can to keep this community growing. Um, but with that said, let me go ahead and drop this here. I'll see you guys later. Have a great weekend. And um, we'll talk again soon. <laughs> be good, hey, everybody. thanks for watching this video all the way through. Make sure you go ahead and like this if you got a ton of value from which I hope you did. Subscribe to the channel and absolutely go ahead and join us in our original chapters community. Links right down there in the description. And as always, you are designed to become who you choose to be. I'll see you later.